Well, now we're with Patrick Garon, which was our technical uh, level designer on the project. And uh, for this moment, what we want to talk about is the fact that we wanted to have some events in the game where there were not necessarily side quests per se, but there were events in which your morality could be affected if someone is uh, attacked or something like that, and you could intervene and with consequences. But it didn't happen, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, to, to do Squid Game and Inter-X, uh, it was hard. Like we had uh, lots of good ideas, and the we had two major limitations. It like the first one I can think of is the engine, <laughs> but also production-wise. And the engine was allowing us to, to put animation, but to be able to synchronize uh, like NPC together, yeah. to uh, to manage the interruption and all that was not something that was simple to do with our engine. So. Uh, lots of the ideas were cut because of that, mm. and when we were able to do them, it became like a problem of production because to to create a very simple situation, the, with the Deus Ex game, you don't have, you don't have a choice but to ask you what happened if the player do that, or there can do so many different yeah, the ways. chaos and all that yeah. you know. And he yeah. has augmentation that he can go and sneak, can be like uh, in, in, invisible, so we will not interrupt. Uh, someone will disappear. What do we do? What does he say? He start to talk to a guy. Before the event, after the it's event, it's very complex. So it becomes a very com something simple become very complex. Yeah. So we always ask ourselves, what if? And for our game, when we like when we we want to create quality, so we will ask, will the, the player will be will be happy with the result? And we spend most of that time doing the side quests instead because there will be a good story that will be developed. And those encounters, we decided to 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 cut them or to change the scope and to, to something very simple. So here's uh, Adam Jensen. Adam Jensen's uh, uh, building, apartment building. Which is, what is it called, Mary? Uh, I believe it's the Chiron building. The, the Chiron building. I used to say Chiron, but yeah, it's Chiron. Um, th th a lot of people have asked us, you know, how come there's like such a really nice uh, kind of posh-looking building in the middle of a, you know, the prostitute district and a gang district and whatnot. You know, it's like you're in this really nice place and then you walk out and right away there's people that, that you know, they want to sell you drugs or whatnot. Uh, the idea was at, at the beginning of the project, we wanted to have a really nice, rich neighborhood in Detroit where a lot of these kind of cyber renaissance, you know, new age buildings would be at. Um, this is where Adam would live and obviously it's... Um, it's David Sarif who's paying for mm -hmm. this apartment because if you look at Adam's personality, it's probably not the kind no, of place he would live in. No, it's not at all the place in. he would live in. Exactly. But uh, we ended up realizing that we couldn't do this uh, this entire neighborhood, but we wanted to keep the nice building for Adam. Uh, and uh, probably after some talk with the, some talks with the level designers as well, we figured out this was the best place to uh, to put it at. So yeah, thematically there's a bit of a clash, but some some is part of the concessions we have to do sometimes. Mr. Jensen. So Adam's apartment is one of the, I think, the most intricate, kind of interesting places in the game. Uh, you know, during the production, we actually called it uh, the Adam's Museum, and the whole idea is because that's what we wanted it to be. We wanted people to just walk through it, and uh, just by observing, you know, th just through all the, the, the show don't tell, to get a lot of information on Adam's background and Adam's personality and what's happened to him uh, in the past, and also show that he likes cereals uh, a lot. And uh, also, there's a, there's a secret stash behind the TV, which is a bit of an homage to the first DSX, uh, which was, uh, I think, in, uh, in Paul's apartment, where you had all the secret stuff uh, with the computers behind the shelves and whatnot. And also, Mary does all this stuff on the Yeah, on there's the, all this, this stuff on the workbench, because we had written in his backstory this big, long thing about how he likes to... He's always been a collector. He used to go to um, old second-hand stores and stuff and find old mechanical objects that he liked to take apart and because he was curious, and he was very into that. And so we pulled that out. And what was interesting about it is we didn't actually tell the story of his backstory, but people who came and saw that workbench then made up their own stories and basically wrote to us and were saying things like, wow, it's so cool. It's like how he's trying to understand his own body and his new mechanics. And I was like, oh, I like that backstory a lot better than what I came up with. So, yeah, that's what we're going with. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it was that too. This room was supposed to give you all the personality of Adam Jensen through his environment. So.
An extremely regrettable affair. I I'd very much like... That, that cutscene actually, uh, in the first iteration, in the first build of this map, it was a first-person cutscene in which you were Pritchard. seeing the computer the through the eyes there. of Adam Johnson and you would see everything that Pritchard was uh, name, uh, finding and everything, but it was very static, it, it, it was lacking the drama, uh, and then our cinematic director really wanted to, to, to do it differently with a third-person uh, approach where we see Adam Jensen interacting with Pritchard and everything. And in the end, uh, I think it's much more more dramatic and much more interesting, more dynamic than what we had in the first place. Yeah. yeah. So he wasn't working alone. Someone off site was doing the actual hacking. Exactly. And whoever it was tried to hide his location by using multiple satellites. But I may have just traced him to here, an abandoned factory complex in Highland Park. Get me the address, Pritchard. Because if we're lucky, whoever pulled our terrorist strings might still be there. Adam, it's David. Let me guess. You're sending me to Highland Park. Not just yet. Frank's figured out why the network's been compromised. There's a persistent transmission coming from Derelict Row. Street gang territory? Well, our dead friend was posing as an Antioch. Who better to hide with than the D Row ballers? Right. I'm on my way. So here we can see all these cards that uh, you know Adam received while he was in convalescence from his operation. Uh, he had to stay home probably for quite a while, and it's, these are the cards that people sent him. They get you know they get better, they get well cards, and it shows you know the amount of details that that we wanted to put in the game. And again, the, the show don't tell, and uh, to have a lot of the universe live through just little things like this that uh, that you could see. And the fact that they are still on his desk shows that uh, it was not a long time ago. Like yeah, he, he was yeah. somewhat rushed out. Of, yeah, yeah. Or that he just never cleans, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> One works, or the other. Works. And then there's the cracked mirror, Mary. Right? Yeah, and the cracked mirror in his bathroom is a, is a big part of it, too. Um, I think that we, we, we are always saying, even before we knew if we could have mirrors in it, we were saying we absolutely have to have a mirror in his bedroom, and he has to have cracked cracked it um and it it shows a lot about what he's been going through and yeah. and it did help us cover some of the technical limitations that we had in the game i believe yeah because we right? decided we wouldn't have reflective yeah, mirrors yeah, for yeah. whatever reason and uh, yeah Go ahead. and for 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 uh, some reason like this kind of psychological reflection of his uh his hunger toward what happened to him like really resonated with the fans and i think it made them empathize even more with the character yeah. And like I said, because technically we couldn't do actual mirrors in it throughout the whole game, so we had, we kind of robot on it and have fun through the emails between him and the uh, the, yeah, yeah. the assistant. Yeah, that's uh, true. Down in in in, in, uh, in the lobby and all. So. It became a bigger story. <laughs> I've worked tirelessly to find a peaceful solution to this dispute, and I unequivocally deplore the methods used by these hostage takers. Now, that being said, I do hope the UN takes a concentrated look at what happened here. Jensen, my god, it's been a while. Remember me? We used to work the old 17th precinct back in the day. Man, I wish I could go with the good old you haven't changed at all bit, but that'd be complete and utter bullshit, right? You're right, what's the deal? Okay, so the machinery's not just for show. I'm undercover, keeping tabs on the derelict row ballers for now. I've got a hunch something big's coming. Why do I get the sudden feeling you're about to include me into that something big? Because you're clever. That and the fact that, well, 
It's pretty obvious. But jokes aside, you couldn't have come at a better time, Jensen. This case I'm on, we're stalling and we could use a little external help. Go ahead. I'm with IA now, and we're working a sting on a dirty cop named Jack O'Malley. Elusive, motherfucker. I mean, men in black elusive. We know he's involved in drugs, weapon dealing, tied into the gangs. But he's clever, and we just can't seem to pin anything on him. I swear he's got friends in high places. Okay, and where do I fit in all this? You're an outsider. You can go places we legally can't. I need someone to do a couple of things. Break into his apartment, sneak into DRB territory, and finally, go undercover posing as a hitman. This guy is nothing minor, Jensen. He's the real deal. Major player, major consequences. We have to get him before shit hits a fan. You in? Can't let a guy like that roam free. I'm in. All right then, let's get to work. Like I said, I've got a couple of very promising leads, but O'Malley's got friends among the powers that be. I wouldn't be able to get my hands on a warrant even if I had footage of the perp confessing in real time as he's finger painting his motive on the wall in the victim's blood. So I guess we're gonna have to break a few rules. Suits me. Rules would only slow me down. Hmm. Very dirty Harry of you, Jensen. But we still have to be careful how we handle this. We've worked hard to catch this son of a bitch. I don't want him to walk on a technicality. Okay. What's this about getting into DRB territory? Yeah, I needed to get in there and track down a shipment of weapons for me. We managed to gain access to solid information that will tie it to O'Malley, but I need proof it's really there. They've probably stashed it around somewhere. A cop dealing weapons to a criminal anti og gang? Not a pretty picture. Got that right. I guess we both agree. Nothing good can come out of this, huh? I don't know where exactly the DRB's cache is, but I know there's a bonus for you if you manage to sneak in and out without being spotted. Would make shit easier to handle on my side. So what am I looking for in O'Malley's apartment? Information, drugs, weapons. Basically anything you think can be used to build a stronger case against him. The more you get, the better. What about the undercover assignment? Posing as a hitman. O'Malley's crafty, and even a bit paranoid. He's always using proxies, scapegoats, and red herrings to get us off his ass. But after months of schmoozing, we finally got through to one of his guys. Turned him into a mole. He provides us with information, stuff like that. And he's gonna be my way in? Exactly. Yesterday, another one of O'Malley's guys whacked someone. A drug dealer. There's a witness, but we don't have any details. O'Malley does, and he wants someone to take care of the mess. The usual guy just got busted for possession, so the contact will send you in to pose as his replacement. O'Malley will be waiting for you in an alley next to the police station. And you want me to milk him to get the info on the witness? You haven't lost your touch, Jensen. We think O'Malley will ask you to retrieve the murder weapon, use it to kill the witness, and then plant it on a scapegoat he can arrest later. What you need to do is get that weapon and bring it to me. And what about the witness? We're almost positive he's a member of the MCBs. Once you know the location, You'll need to get there, take care of any opposition, and prep him for retrieval. Prep him? Well, you know, he's a gangbanger, Jensen. He's not gonna turn in peacefully, but we need him alive. So I guess you're gonna have to play this one macho and knock him out. One of our guys will then just happen to stumble upon him. You know, serendipity. Okay, let's do this. You can contact me on my info link if anything comes up. Excellent. Oh, and Jensen, one last thing. To protect my cover, it'd be better if you only contact me again once you've taken care of everything.